The vastness of space around the Thule homeworld was crowded, not with stars, but with the imposing silhouettes of the combined Earth fleet. Hundreds of warships, from sleek destroyers to massive dreadnoughts, stood in orbit, a metallic forest bristling with the potential for destruction. At the heart of the fleet, Admiral Chester Noons observed the planet below from the command bridge of the flagship Indomitable. Noons was a figure of authority, his presence commanding respect and attention. Yet, as he gazed at the Thule homeworld, his usual composure was tinged with a somber reflection. The planet, with its swirling clouds and continents darkened by the scars of conflict, was a constant reminder of the war's brutality and the eminent decision that lay on his shoulders. Thule's, a race that humanity had hoped might share the vast expanse of space and peace, had become the architects of unimaginable sorrow. Their unprovoked attacks had obliterated human colonies, leaving nothing but ash and grief in their wake. The failed peace negotiations, where emissaries seeking a peaceful resolution were met with deadly force, had sealed the Thule's fate in the eyes of human governments. Admiral Noons turned away from the viewport, his mind a whirlwind of strategy and sorrow. The war room was alive with activity, officers and strategists poring over data, simulations, and reconnaissance reports. Yet amidst the hum of technology and the murmur of voices, Noons found himself grappling with the ethical implications of his orders. To nuke a planet, to erase an entire species from existence, he muttered under his breath, the words heavy with the weight of their meaning. His advisor, Captain Helen Ameris, stood by his side, her expression one of understanding and shared burden. It's not just about retribution, Sir Maris said, her voice steady. It's about ensuring the survival of humanity. The Thule's left us no choice. Noons nodded, acknowledging the truth in her words. The decision had been made at the highest levels, with the full backing of the United Earth governments. Yet, as the one who would give the final order, Noons couldn't help but feel the isolation that came with command. The command bridge of the Indomitable was a nexus of tension and anticipation. Officers and crew members moved with purpose, their actions a testament to the gravity of the impending operation. In the midst of it all stood Admiral Chester Noons, a solitary figure wrestling with the burden of command and the monumental decision before him. The room fell silent as Noons approached the central holodable, where a 3D projection of the Thule homeworld rotated slowly. The planet, marked by the coordinates of major population centers and military installations, was about to become a testament to humanity's resolve and its capacity for destruction. Captain Helena Maris, ever Noon's confidant and advisor, was the first to break the silence. The fleet is ready, Admiral, she reported, her voice betraying none of the turmoil that Noon's felt. All ships have confirmed their readiness to commence the bombardment on your order. Noons nodded, his gaze fixed on the holographic planet. The discussion that followed was a microcosm of the war's final phase strategists, advocating for a swift and decisive blow to end the Thule threat once and for all. While intelligence officers highlighted the significance of the action, not just as a military victory but as a message to any future adversaries. The moral implications were not lost on Noons. To extinguish an entire species was an act without precedent in human history, a line crossed from which there could be no return. The room's atmosphere was charged with the weight of this understanding, each officer present aware that their actions would be scrutinized by history. I understand the strategic necessity, Noons finally said, his voice steady but heavy with emotion. Well, and I am aware of the risks of allowing the Thule's to regroup or escape. But let us not forget that today. We are not just soldiers executing a mission. We are the instruments of a decision that will define humanity in the eyes of the universe. The room remained silent, the officers and crew absorbing Noon's words, the gravity of their task settling in their hearts. With a deep breath, Noon's turned to the communications officer. Send the order. Commence the bombardment, he commanded, his voice resolute despite the turmoil within. As the order was relayed, the fleet sprang into action, the cold precision of military efficiency masking the emotional cost of the operation. One by one, the ships confirmed their compliance, their weapons systems targeting the vulnerable planet below. Noons remained on the bridge, watching as the first of the nuclear missiles streaked across the void, their deadly cargo destined to reshape the future of interstellar relations and humanity's place within it. The moment the missiles were launched, 
Nunes felt a profound sense of isolation aware that he had set in motion an event that would forever mark the annals of human history. As the nuclear weapons made their silent journey toward the Thule homeworld, a sudden flurry of activity erupted in the space surrounding the planet. The Thule's, in a last-ditch effort to thwart their doom, launched every starcraft capable of flight, their sleek, advanced ships slicing through space toward the Earth fleet's blockade. Admiral Chester Noons, from his command post aboard the Indomitable, watched the approaching swarm of enemy ships with a grim resolve. The desperation of the Thule's was palpable, their maneuvers erratic, fueled by the primal instinct to survive. Yet Noons and his fleet were undeterred, their strategy and firepower a testament to humanity's determination to end the threat once and for all. will engage all targets Noons ordered, his voice calm but carrying the weight of command. Across the fleet, weapon systems lit up, targeting the incoming horde with precision born of years of conflict. The battle that ensued was a dance of death, the void between the two forces alive with the light of laser fire and the destructive beauty of exploding starcraft. Despite the Thule's technological prowess, they were hopelessly outmatched. The Earth fleet, unified in purpose and honed through the brutal lessons of war, countered every move, anticipated every strategy, that for every ship that broke through the initial barrage, a dozen more were destroyed, their fiery demises bright against the backdrop of space. The desperation of the Thule's to survive, to break free from the impending cataclysm, lent them a ferocity that Noons had anticipated but still found unsettling. The Thule pilots, knowing there was no retreat, no possibility of mercy, fought with a disregard for their own lives that was both horrifying and pitiable. As the battle raged, Noons remained focused, issuing commands with clinical precision. Yet within him, there was a turmoil that mirrored the chaos outside. The sight of the Thule ships, each a life, each a story ended in flame, was a burden he bore silently. The necessity of the conflict did little to ease the weight on his soul. Gradually, the Thule counterattack began to falter, their numbers dwindling as the Earth fleet maintained its relentless assault. The last of their starcraft, in a final act of defiance, made a suicidal charge toward the indomitable, only to be intercepted moments before impact. As the silence of space reclaimed its dominion over the battlefield, Noons allowed himself a moment to reflect on the cost of victory. The Thule starcraft, now debris adrift in the void, were a grim reminder of the war's toll, a testament to the lengths to which both sides had gone in pursuit of their aims. The final order had been given, the line crossed, and as Noons turned his gaze back to the Thule homeworld, now minutes away from obliteration, he knew that the war's end would mark the beginning of a new era one, in which humanity would have to reckon with the consequences of its actions and the cost of its survival. The calm that followed the last stand of the Thule defense was deceptive, a brief interlude before the execution of an order that would forever alter the course of human history. Admiral Chester Noons, standing at the heart of the command bridge on the Indomitable, was acutely aware of the weight of the moment. Around him, the crew moved with somber efficiency, their faces etched with the gravity of their impending action. Initiate the launch sequence Noons commanded, his voice steady yet imbued with the solemnity of the occasion. The order once given set into motion a series of events that was both irreversible and profound. As the nuclear weapons, each capable of unimaginable destruction, made their silent journey toward the Thule homeworld, the crew of the Indomitable and the entire fleet watched with a mix of triumph and trepidation. The silence was palpable, a thick shroud that enveloped the command bridge as the countdown continued. Noon's gaze was fixed on the main viewport, where the planet below a world teeming with life, history, and untold stories awaited its fate. The reality of what they were about to do, the annihilation of an entire species, was a burden that every soul aboard the fleet felt, a shared responsibility for an act that was as much about survival as it was about retribution. As the first of the nuclear weapons detonated on the planet's surface, a brilliant flash of light erupted, followed by more, each explosion a bright star of destruction that marked the end of the Thule civilization. The planet, once a vibrant world of cities and ecosystems, was transformed into a hellish landscape, its surface consumed by atomic fire. The reactions among the fleet's crew were varied a mix of relief that the long war might finally be over, triumph at the decisive victory, 
and an underlying horror at the scale of destruction they had unleashed. Whispers filled the command bridge, a chorus of voices grappling with the moral and ethical implications of their actions. We did what we had to do, some said, clinging to the justification that the Thule's unprovoked aggression and refusal to negotiate had left humanity with no other choice. Is this what victory looks like others wondered aloud, the sight of the burning planet a stark reminder of the war's true cost? Admiral Noons remained silent, his eyes never leaving the viewport. The emotions within him were a tumultuous sea pride in his fleet's capabilities, relief at the war's end, and a profound sorrow for the path they had chosen. As the last of the nuclear weapons detonated, transforming the Thule homeworld into a sun-like orb of destruction, the magnitude of their decision fully sank in. The Indomitable's command bridge is quiet, the crew subdued as they witness the aftermath of their actions. The Thule homeworld, once a bustling planet teeming with life, now resembles a sun-like orb, its surface a glowing testament to the devastating power of nuclear weaponry. Admiral Chester Noon stands apart, his gaze fixed on the planet. The victory, if it can be called that, feels hollow. The annihilation of the Thule's, a decision born out of a desire for security and retribution, now weighs heavily on him and humanity. While the crew and officers aboard the fleet express a wide range of emotions, some feel vindication, believing that the Thule's aggressive actions justified this ultimate response. Others are filled with unease, questioning what the future holds and the precedents they've set for handling extraterrestrial relations. Bones engages with his crew, listening to their concerns and sharing in their reflections. The discussion touches on the potential for future conflicts, the ethical considerations of their actions, and the long-term impact on human morality and governance. This introspective dialogue highlights the complexities of leadership and the burden of making decisions that affect countless lives. As the fleet prepares to depart from the now lifeless Thule system, Noons contemplates the cost of their victory. He considers the message sent to the universe about humanity's willingness to eradicate an entire species to protect its own. The implications of this action, both for humanity's self-perception and its standing among potential extraterrestrial civilizations are profound and unsettling. Several years after the destruction of the Thule homeworld, the event has become a pivotal moment in human history, a subject of intense analysis, debate, and reflection. The moral and ethical questions raised by the annihilation continue to resonate, influencing policies, diplomatic strategies, and the exploration of the cosmos. Humanity's expansion into space continues, but the memory of the Thule serves as a stark reminder of the war and the capabilities of human aggression. This cautionary tale shapes humanity's approach to new discoveries and interactions with potential extraterrestrial life, emphasizing diplomacy and understanding over conflict. Boone's retired but still regarded as a key figure in human history reflects on the legacy of the war. The decision to nuke the Thule homeworld while ensuring humanity's survival, has also imposed a responsibility to pursue peace and to respect the sanctity of life across the universe. The story of Admiral Chester Noons and the Thule homeworld stands as a dark milestone in humanity's journey among the stars, a reminder of the cost of war and the importance of seeking a future where such decisions are never again necessary. Thanks for listening to this story. Be sure to leave a like and subscribe if you liked it. We'll see you in the next one.